We are here with 245 Adabots here at the Troy Event 1 in Michigan. They were the Kettering Event 1 winners a couple weeks ago, and they'll be highlighting their shooter intake combo, their climber mechanism, and their vision system here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more and apply. Support funds content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and fund members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. So first off, we'll be covering their intake and shooter double system. So hi everyone, uh, my name is Arjit. I'm a senior on the team and we have an arts robot. We have a bit of a combination. You want to show the uh, intake uh, position? Yeah. So we have a combination between intake and shooter. It's all in one mechanism. And we did this to eliminate um, internal transport. So we are originally at the beginning of the season, we considered a separate intake and a separate shooter system. But we learned through testing that we didn't want to lose like five seconds getting our the notes from the intake to the shooter. So we kind of looked at a few concepts from Robot in three days. And we saw a team that did something to eliminate internal transport. And we really liked it. and. This was kind of what we came up with. Uh, this intake arm system is mounted based off two uh, arms. So you have this arm system here, uh, which is like our wrists, and we have the arm system back here. So this arm system back here is working through a chain system, same for up here. Um, and we're, allowed to, we're able to go up with this back chain, and then with here, we're able to adjust our wrist. Um, we want to show that. So that's the back chain. And, and, and that's the adjustment. So now with this system, we're able to, since we have two joint separate hinges essentially to uh, do this uh, for our system, I apologize. Uh, we're able to kind of shoot from anywhere on the field or most places on the field. Uh, we're still working on a system so that way we can say, hey, I know I'm like, 10 feet away, I'm just making up a number, then I know that my robot needs to be in this position. But right now we're able to consistently shoot from the subwoofer and the safe area, and we use a uh, limelight detection, which you'll hear about later on. So you guys also have a pretty cool climber here at this event. So you guys wanna talk a bit more about that? Yeah, Mark can talk to you more about that. Hi, my name is Mark and I'm a junior on the team. So what essentially our climb here is, was a concept from our 2005 game. It is a fiberglass bendy rod, or what we call a bendy rod, and here's the hooks. And we have a Kevlar uh, wire here that runs to our center of gravity, which we measured before. Um, and so essentially, during the game, we'll let this bendy rod move up. How do you want to demonstrate that? And so once we hit the chain with the hooks, we're up about in three or two seconds, and then we just move down. Yeah, that's our climbing system. So you mentioned that you guys reuse a climber concept from 2005. What is something that this is your first time as a team doing or attempting? So what's something new about it is that we're using this bendy rod system as also a way to communicate to our drivers uh, that, um, for example, in our pre-state in the intake command, once we've seen a note with our line light, this would flash a different color to, to indicate that we've taken a note or we're currently tracking toward a note. So you guys also said that you guys have a really cool vision system. So you guys want to talk a bit more about that? Uh, yeah, that'd be good. All right, so this is our first successful year really using vision. So we have one limelight mounted to the front of a robot up here, and that runs a color threshold detection to look for notes because they're the only orange things on the field. So that works really well. We can detect notes from around about half the field, so like 10 meters away or so. And then we have another robot in over here, or another limelight in over here on the back of the robot that runs uh, April tag detection. So that allows us to locate us ourselves on the field uh, from around about five or so meters away and, 
accuracy increases as we get closer, obviously. Uh, so between the two of those, that works in both our autonomous uh, and teleop phases. So in autonomous, we'll be running the April tag detection to reset any odometry drift that gets generated by our swerve. And then we'll run note detection when we're going to intake a note and we'll be able to automatically intake a note from around or so three meters away. Uh, that works reliably. And we also use the same sort of systems in teleop to make it easier for our drivers. Uh, we'll talk about more of that in a minute. Yeah. Um, so you mentioned that you guys make things easier for your drivers. What is something that this year that your drivers have found extremely helpful, especially with the stage blocking vision by the human, by the driver stations? Yeah, so I'd say one of our biggest features is we've just kind of, not to install drivers, but we've dumbed down the systems a lot, especially from last year. Uh, we were using almost every single button we had available. Everything did little different things. You had to make minute adjustments everywhere. But this year, the robot does it all for you. So, for example, when you go to intake, uh, you press the button, arm goes down to the intake state, and then while you're holding that button, as you intake a note, it'll, as soon as you intake a note, the arm will retract into the safe position, so that way we don't impact against a wall or another robot and break it. And then it'll also automatically adjust that note inside the intake, or run it back and forth to eliminate any side-to-side -side drift. Uh, so all inside one button, we essentially accomplish three or four different routines. Uh, same thing for our primary driver. When they go to intake a note, uh, they just press one button, the limelight on the front of the robot will choose the closest note and then it will drive to that automatically. So robot, driver just has to point the robot in roughly the right direction, press a button, and they're golden. Uh, same thing for shooting. We have a single button that will shoot from any position but right within about 300 meters on the field. Uh, it'll adjust speeds and the wrist, arm, angle, and the shoulder. Uh, and that'll also try to minimize damage and shoot from distance and also aligns the April tags. So, Rotation is controlled largely by automated systems in the robot that allow us to rotate very precisely to the right angle, whether it's the amp, the human player station, or the subwoofer. Well, thank you guys so much. And this was 245 Adabots here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineered their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to Kettering.edu first to learn more and apply.